Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday. My name is Michelle, and I am the Outreach Events Coordinator here at Pasadena Humane. I want to thank everyone for taking the afternoon to join us and learn about dental health. I'm actually joined today by Dr. Spees from the Kenyatta Chris Santa Animal Hospital. Dr. Spees, you disappeared on me. Didn't mean to. So, um, so guys, this is Dr. Spees. He's joining us today. He is actually, um, you know, he is a well-versed veterinarian. So he's practiced on large and small animals in Wyoming and Colorado before he came to Southern California and took over his veterinary practice in La Crescenta. Um, and he has a special interest in surgeries and internal medicine. So was all of that correct, Dr. Spees? Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I have general interest in everything. Not really too much special interest, but it's all it's all fun and interesting for sure. So, all right, well, uh, I'm gonna go over a couple of webinar reminders for those of us who are joining us for the very first time today. So welcome. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with everybody so you can see see what I'm talking about. Um, so I want to remind everyone that this is an audio and visual presentation. So even though you can see and hear us, we cannot see and hear you. Um, and with that in mind, please use the question box in your control panel on the right hand side of your screen. And we'll go ahead and ask those questions of Dr. Spees as time permits. Okay. Um, I do want to try and save all of the questions till the end, if at all possible. He might have something brilliant to answer your questions sometime along the way. Okay, so as I had mentioned, today's webinar is Pet Dental Health with Dr. James Spees. Um, our next upcoming free webinar is our Coyote Safety Workshop, and this is, you know, a hot button for most people and we need to learn how to live humanely with um, our urban wildlife, including the coyotes. Um, if at any time you miss any part of this webinar, you need to get up and leave just a few minutes early. It is recorded and it will be sent to you tomorrow afternoon. Um, and without further ado, go ahead and take it away, Dr. Spees. All right, well, thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Pasadena Humane Society, and thank everybody who's watching and listening this afternoon. It's National Pet Dental Month, or something like that. It's a nice, nice month. Um, and so we're, it's, it's a good time to kind of just zero in and, and talk about pet dental health. And uh, we're going to limit it to dogs and cats here today. Um, so you'll have to uh, tune in for a later date on, on potbelly pig, dental health, and, you know, certain other species. But everybody's got teeth, most mammals, all mammals. Um, but so anyway, we'll, uh, um, dental health is, in, is, is important. So it's, and, it, and it's huge in our pet population. You know, we think that probably 80% of adult dogs and probably 70% of adult cats have some degree of um, dental disease or oral disease of some kind. So we're talking about the teeth and the gums and, and all those associated structures there. So why is this is this such a such a problem? And it has a lot to do with the fact that we domesticated these these pets and we we took their their um, we changed the main purpose of their teeth from tearing and, and ripping flesh and, and things off bones to a kibble which or even canned food. So the, you know, there's not much ripping and tearing going on on with those. And so, you know, you had your, your coyote up there. I would love to see a coyote skull and see just, you know, what their teeth look like. I keep thinking I'll see one that's got hit by a car or something, but coyotes don't seem to 
they're a little smarter than that. And they, anyway, I've never come across a Kiley skull, and I would like to, I'd like to see just what they look like. But I think that out, out in the wild, these these critters are, um, you know, they're just they're just ripping and tearing, and they're not they're not chewing a whole lot. Um, another thing that we've done, and this is this is slim, we call him, um, but we've taken we've taken a lot of these these dogs, and we've got all these teeth in there, and then we bred them to be like bulldogs and, and boxers and, and these brachiocephalic dogs. And we've taken all these teeth and we've just compressed them up into a little skull that, that makes it, you know, difficult. There's, there's, there, these teeth are crowded in there and, and they, um, they, they, they just create a lot of these areas where food and, and saliva and then bacteria in the mouth can, can come together and we um, uh, and it just it just creates an environment in there that that's, that's ultimately not very healthy. So let's let's uh, put up that whole question on on some signs of oral and dental health problems with pets. All right, I've gone ahead and launched the poll. We'll keep it at for about. 30 seconds, um, but it's, you know, uh, what are symptoms of oral health issues? Is it halitosis or the fancy name for bad breath? Uh, red inflamed gums, hard tartar or calcium on the teeth? So uh, we're gonna go ahead and close the poll in three, two, and one. Dr. Spees, our audience says it's all of the above. Okay. Well, and that is a correct answer because, um, and there's, there's certainly more, more signs uh, than just, just those things, but those are things that are, um, you know, quite noticeable. Um, your pet's bad breath. Um, and the thing that, that's very important is to, to get used to looking in there because one of the one of the answers up there was none of the above, and that's certainly included in all of the above. Because without looking, we might not even be able to. You won't be able to tell. I mean, there's some 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 pet breath is just just atrocious. You look at the teeth, and they're not so bad. So there might be some other other causes for that. But um, the the other things, the the tartar and the and the the calculus is just essentially another term for for the tartar um and then the gums the, we see a lot of gingivitis and, and inflammation of the gums with that accumulation of the plaque and tartar um, around these teeth um, but certainly other things are like broken teeth and we'll um you know, these, we give pets stuff that's harder than their to teeth to chew on, like like bones and antlers and things like that, thinking we're doing some good. But these pets and dogs especially will chew chew on these things and they'll bust their teeth. And that's, that can certainly be a problem as well. Um, so let's, here's my little, um, this is my model here. And one thing that I want everybody to take a look at is just how nice and, and pretty that that tooth to, to gum interface is. There's just it's just not red and inflamed at all. And when we start talking about gingivitis, I hope that turns up all right. But we got all sorts of problems here, and and that redness that, that's around the gums that's that's gingivitis. And it's and it's it, it's certainly a, a sign that there's something more serious going on in there um, than maybe just some plaque and tartar, especially when it gets real bad. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that uh, a little later too. So um, yeah, we've got a multiple of, of, of signs of. of, of Periodontal disease. You might see your pet chewing on food and, and have it fall out of their mouth. Um, that's going to be an indication of some 
dental or oral pain. And when you get when you get gingivitis and you get some serious periodontal disease and all that inflammation in there, it's got to hurt. And and perhaps they're pretty stoic, and and it may it it, it might be kind of rare for them actually to lose their um, their food in their mouth, but a lot of times, a lot of times they do. It's it's a rare pet that will not eat because their teeth are sore or infected or in trouble because that's that's what they got to do to survive. They've got to eat. They're not going to hold off and think something's going to get better. They're going to want to eat. Um, okay, so yeah, Michelle, put that that next picture up there because this this is one. And I gotta say, we don't have any photographers around here, um, and so we we like to we like to take pictures when all these pets are anesthetized. They hold still much better. But that first, let's go back to the first picture, because look at this here. We've got a, that lower that lower canine tooth is showing up there a little bit, and that's just a little bit of tartar in there. And I have to think that that. A lot of people just don't look in their pet's mouths or, and let's go to this next picture because this is the same dog. And my gosh, we've got a little bit of tartar on that lower canine, but if you pull that lip up and you look at that upper arcade, I mean, gosh, that canine tooth has a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of tartar on it and stain. And then we have all this, and this poor dog was thinking about flossing but forgot to get all the hair and all that floss out of those, out of his mouth or her mouth and get it away from the, the tooth. And then on that, that far tooth to the left, that's a big um, premolar. And, and that's, a, that's just harder and plaque and, and things on there. And you can see that how severe the, the inflammation is around the gum. And invariably there's gonna be pus and things like that in there. While we're looking at that picture too, when we get down to some things we can do to prevent this from ever occurring, one of the big components of all that garbage in there is saliva. And right above that, that larger tooth that's on the upper arcade on the left um, is, is one of the largest salivary ducts that comes in. And so that, that becomes very important when we start talking about about brushing your pet's teeth and things like that, because a lot of times we don't get we don't get back there. And I hope I can show you how to how to, how to do that. But to know that 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 salivary gland exists there, um, uh, that's that's important. Okay, so so we know that these these animals are going to have bad bad teeth, and they and the majority of them do. And so what are we going to do about it? And so, so we're going to talk a little bit about the non-anesthetic dentals because yeah, that, so let's find out if anybody has had that procedure done with their dog. So there's a poll going up on the screen now. So I've had non-anesthetic dental procedures for my animal. Yes or no? All right, and we're going to go ahead and close the poll in three, two, and one. So it's it's a mixed bag, Dr. Spees. It what? It's a mixed bag. So some have, oh, some yeah. have it. Well, you know what? It's it's. Uh, I'll I'll admit I was I was the poster child for non-anesthetic dentals about 20 years ago because I thought, yeah, gosh, we, we don't. Uh, do we have to anesthetize these guys and do we have to do all these things and when when you can actually get in there and scale scale that stuff off i mean oftentimes i'll take my thumbnail and crack off some of those big chunks of tartar but it i i, I kind of learned the hard way with one of my own pets because he would sit still and i i could scale and, and, and get all that stuff off his teeth but one day I noticed there was a different odor to his, his, his breath and it was an infected, <laughs> dead type smell. And sure enough, I look back and that far, that far back molar, um, it was, you know, one of these, these back molars here, 
you, you just, I, I couldn't tell that it was infected without actually having him in this guy's get, get his mouth open far enough to do that. So anyway, this poor dog, he suffered with, with an infected tooth, essentially a toothache for a long time, and I thought I was doing him some good. And I wasn't really. Um, I kind of liken the, the non-anesthetic dentals to um, getting all excited about going to Vegas and, and oh, it's going to be a blast and we're going to have a good time, but you end up stopping in Barstow. And so you're, gonna, you're probably going to save some money doing that, but you're not going to get what you really wanted and, and what you really, I don't know if you need to go to, to Vegas, but you're not, it, the problem with non-anesthetic dentals is you just can't get all of the tartar off the teeth. You can't get a good look at all of the teeth. And, and it takes a special individual pet that's going to allow someone to get in there and do all the, the cleaning. And important to polish after we scale those teeth, you make little micro abrasions in the, in the enamel of the crown of the tooth. And it, you've got to you've got to smooth that out with with the polish, and uh, or you just kind of build scaffolding for that that plaque and tartar to build back up. But it's it's very difficult to do that. And um, and then and then the other thing is we're just dealing with a very small portion of the tooth, and that's and that's the crown of the tooth because this is just a little thing here. But what, what actually shows up underneath the gum line is only about a third of the tooth. And so you've got a tremendous amount of, of, um, of tooth that's, that you can't even see. And so, so we're limited with non-anesthetic dentals to just take dental radiographs because the pet's got to be, gotta be still to do that. And our dentist is going to say, here, hold still, bite down on this, don't move. But that's, you're not going to tell a pet to do that when you're thinking with their mouth. So I think non-anesthetic dentals are unfortunately here to stay. Uh, I know a lot of the pet shops and the, and the groomers, um, you know, offer that, offer that service. I'm not so sure it's even, if it's even legal to do that without a veterinarian on the premise. Um, that's the state veterinary board and, 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 and that to, to regulate that kind of thing, but um, and that's certainly not any concern of mine. I mean, that's my my biggest thing with with the non-anesthetic dentals, and again from personal experience, is we're not we're not going to get we're not going to get the job done. You're not going to get the get up underneath that gum line to get the tartar that that is accumulated there and that's causing the periodontal disease. Do we have a question on how many people? Um, have their pet's teeth brushed by a groomer? Uh, no, we okay. don't have that question on there, but we can go ahead and ask it and ask everyone to answer in the chat, in the chat box. Um, yeah. I, I know I can say personally that uh, my dog goes to the groomers every two months and on every other visit, she does get her teeth brushed. Yeah, and I hear that too. And I, it, it's um it, it 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 kind of interests me that that that, that people do that i mean it was I, I i can't you know i if i go a couple of days without brushing my teeth i put them on all um but uh because i forget um but it uh it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to to, to have a brush once once a month i mean that's 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 I guess nice that the groomers will do that, but I can't yes. imagine that it does any good at all. So um, I will put the question on uh, the screen. Uh, it has been recommended by my vet to have my pet's teeth cleaned. Yeah, and I guess well, one thing we did, and, and then just my biggest question, I guess, is what why we didn't. Why didn't you follow through with that, that recommendation? So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. And this is another question with, uh, we've got yes and no. 
Okay. One other thing about the non-anesthetic dentals, I think I think if you did, um, well, I mean, you've got to be careful. I mean, you're, it, it's, if there's just a little bit of stain and tartar, you know, the, and these fats are probably going to be to have any benefit from from that, even though the benefit's small, they're going to have to be young pets that don't don't have a lot of a lot of tartar buildup because once it gets up there once you get that the gum inflammation there's a there's a rare dog or cat that's going to let you take that dental instrument and get up underneath the gum line and one other thing that i want i want to mention is why they, when we talk about why all this occurs it is hugely dependent on genetics and the genetics put together they everybody's got different different amount of saliva in their mouth, they did the biofilm we talk about that's just in our mouth and it's that liquid and it's saliva and it's it's you know water and other stuff. But but the thickness of it and how much it adheres to the teeth, boy that's that's all determined genetically. So you'll see a whole range of tartar prone pets and some some of their entire life they don't develop any of so I think that's that's kind of interesting and something to certainly keep in mind. But all of these little things, the non-anesthetic dentals, the having a toothbrush once every couple of months, those type of things. I mean, it's 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 nice to think that that maybe we're doing something good, but in in reality, I I don't think we are. I think we're probably you know doing a disservice then to our pets if. If things are advanced and we're thinking that we, we're going to get something done um, by cutting some corners. So, when a veterinarian is going to take a, a get started with, with this mouth here, um, it's, and I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm jumping ahead. If we, if we asked everybody why they didn't follow through with their veterinarian's recommendation to have their teeth clean, then the biggest things are anesthesia and cost of it. But, and so hopefully I can, I can help you with some of those things today. To do a good job, like I said, I mean, these pets, they need to be anesthetized. And a lot of the a lot of the cost involved with that is 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 safety. It is safety with the anesthesia. It is safety with the the dental equipment, and 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 all those things. So we have this this little dog that that, that comes in with the the hair and all all the all the badness that's around there. Prior to any anesthetic. At least at our at our hospital, we do a lot of pre-anesthetic workup. That's a blood, a complete blood count and a chemistry analysis to make sure that everything's working, major organ-wise, and all that. We do an electrocardiogram prior to any anesthesia, and and that gets sent off to a, a cardiologist, and we get those results right back right away. Everything's good. Then we do the anesthetic procedure. So all those things are going to going to add some some cost to it because safety is expensive, unfortunately. But it's something that I certainly am not going to um, you know cut any corners for for safety when it comes to that. Twenty years ago, maybe not not anymore. Um, so that's 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 very important. Another safety issue, and you saw the the plastic tube that it's called the endotracheal tube. All pets get those put down into their trachea. It's got a little cuff that you inflate, and that's very important because as you get in there chopping and crunching and 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 working all that stuff off the teeth, a lot of it will get aerosolized, and a lot of it can get inhaled down the trachea and sit in the lungs, and that's certainly not going to be any. Yeah. And a lot of there's a lot of water that gets involved in, in with this too. So we've got the endotracheal tube going down, and, and this pet's maintained on on some gas anesthesia, and and that's very nice because you can very quickly 
um, change the level of, of anesthesia as needed, and we monitor the living daylights out of these guys. So this pet here right now has an EKG hooked up to them, and we're monitoring all the time. It's got a, uh, we're taking its temperature, we're checking its um, oxygen concentration of its, um, of its blood, and its blood pressure. And so all those things are going on. There's a technician that's just strictly doing the, the anesthesia and the monitoring, and then the, the doctor, and usually an assistant technician is, is doing the, uh, the cleaning and, and, and all the different procedures that, that may need to be done there. So, so that's, that's getting, that, that's, that's the buildup to, to this. Now we're ready to, to go to work in there. And, and do that. So dental x-rays are the next the next step. And here is um, uh, these don't go up real well and but what I wanted to really show you is how much the the bottom left tooth there you can see how how far down those roots go and and so that's that's a lot of a lot of a lot of tooth there that if we're not if we're not taking x-rays we're not we're not being able to, we're not going to evaluate those properly but there's a lot of a lot of things that can that go on under the gum line that you that you wouldn't know we see we see a lot of abscesses down at the at the roots um and that the crown can look fine it can be just a happy little white crown up there but down below You've got you've got this abscess and, and let's see. Do we have that other that other X-ray picture? Was there one more? Yeah. See, look at the look at that tooth down at the bottom left there. It that, you can see where the bone is, and, and that that second tooth, the two little roots there, they're just kind of standing on the bone. Now that tooth is probably covered probably with a bunch of well there'll be some gum tissue there but but you can appreciate the the bone loss there and that tooth that tooth just just hanging there we go down the jaw there a little bit to that that larger molar and you can see where we the the, the bone is actually just been we've lost a lot of bone there just due to periodontal disease exactly right there and, and you were even seeing a little bifurcation. You could probably get a dental probe between underneath that that tooth there, where that kind of that dark hole is. And and that's that tooth looks like it's pretty well seated in there. It's probably not loose, but boy, that is just yeah. You know, there you go. That's those little holes there. They're well, what my dental hygienist termed it the other day. I just had my teeth clean the other day. I feel great, <laughs> um, but they're, they're food traps. You know, you just they, they're just those areas that that just food gets trapped in there, and it's it's difficult to get out. And then, you know, all that stuff is food and saliva and bacteria, and so that can it just it's just a wreck waiting to happen. But without dental X-rays, you can't see see any of those things. Um, Okay, so so yeah, so you gotta have your pet anesthetized, get good dental X-rays. Then we'll start start going in and 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 do the cleaning. So this was this was our little friend before, and you know one thing I wanted to say too. I mean, I, I, people probably look in their dog's mouth at some some point, and if if someone looked at that, you know, it's I guess we all have our stuff that we <laughs> want to ignore. Or we don't want to confront it, or we don't want to want to think about it. But you know, cleaning up the backyard behind the the shed, the old old lumber and everything—that's something I'll I'll put off. But you know, so we all have it. But if you've got a pet that looks like this, I I strongly urge you not to not to put that off because that's that's something that that is a it's a health health problem. And I guess I didn't say earlier, and I should. When we have bad infected teeth and, and we're sitting in a nice blood supply rich gum tissue, that bacteria can get access to the bloodstream for that. And 
Um, and we know that causes problems with the kidneys and the liver. Well, the body has to deal with, with a septicemia at whatever level. It's usually a low grade because this stuff's chronic. But so anyway, we've gone in there, we've got our 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 x-rays, we know we know what's going on. And now we take our, our dental instruments and and we will we'll scale and polish and, and going on with what we've learned from our x-rays, we're going to you know possibly do some extractions and things like that. Now, when we get in there and the tooth is loose, we're going to extract that. It's uh, it's we've lost all those periodontal ligaments, and it uh, and that tooth's just not going to do any good. It's probably going to hurt when when it gets uh, hit upon with with some food or or a chew toy or something. But anyway, so this this dog here. Let's look at that. Look at the after picture here real quick. So we got in there. We cleaned those roots up. We we did some subgingival. Uh, root cleaning as well. Um, and then we had all those upper teeth, they were they needed to come out. And so we did the did the extractions and there's there's you can see some sutures in there. And and just well you can imagine how much better that pet's going to to feel getting those those gross infected um, teeth out of their out of their head. And it, it is, it'll never cease to amaze me how much better pets feel after they've had their teeth cleaned. You know, I'm kind of excited. I got my teeth cleaned here last Friday and it, 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 you, you, you know, your, your mouth feels better. But then if you had a big major toothache for a year or two, getting that, getting that removed, um, I, I hear it all the time that, that wow, you know, I, my dog or cat is is actually feeling better, so it's that's very important. Um, they didn't talk a whole lot about cats, but your cats have kind of a unique thing. They'll certainly get plaque and tartar, and you'll get that buildup. You'll get the gingivitis and, and all that. But their teeth are prone to these things that we call feline oral resorptive lesions or or florals. They're they're like a cavity. They get they get a, a, a they get a hole in their in their enamel and into their crown, and it gets down into the into the pulp cavity. And these are usually these stupid little um, premolars that they were good at one time for these animals to rip and tear flesh off stuff, but now they don't they don't do any good. But that's something that you can look at your cat's mouth and, and you'll usually see, you'll see a, a just redness on the crown of the tooth itself, or there'll be a lot of serious inflammation and redness around, around the gums. Um, another thing that cats will, will develop is a condition called stomatitis that just means inflammation of the, of the mouth. But those guys, they may not eat because you open their mouth and, and it's just, oh man, it looks like Look like the hamburger back there. That the the gums and the in the palate epithelium is just you know it, it looks terrible. And that's a crazy disease because we don't really know what causes it. But the latest thinking is it's probably an autoimmune reaction to their teeth. And so we have, we remove all these these teeth and these cats with stomatitis and they'll be darn they they do better. Um, they don't have a tooth in their head, but they're eating and happy and, and, and pain-free. So I guess that kind of goes through a lot of the, the treatment things. Um, and then, so let, let me get to some, some things that we can do at home uh, to prevent this from occurring uh, to the degree that it will if we don't do anything. So All right, and we have a poll question to go along with that too. So let's see what the audience thinks. What are some ways that you can help your pet with oral health? Brush your teeth, give them dental treats, get them a dental exam, or I don't have to do anything. Their mouth will clean itself. What do you think? Yes, indeed. Well, 
And yeah. that, but I'll tell you, there's there's a lot of things, and and it's it it might not um, it might not be just one thing. You might have to do a lot of things. Again, back to genetics, some of us are more tartar prone than than others, and um, so. It might, it might take brushing. It might take brushing and some some supplements or or things like uh, that. And there's some good one good ones out there. Yeah. So uh, it it was a mix between treats and a dental exam. Okay. Well, very good. Um, I think by far and away the most um, important thing to do is brush. And <laughs> another thing that I, 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 I ask a lot of people is, you know, oh, do you have a dental kit at home? And oh, yeah, yeah, I got one. So, well, if you bought any more toothpaste with it, oh, I don't know, it's in the home cupboard somewhere. A lot of people buy those things, but they, they, don't, they don't use them. So, anyway, it's important to do that. I think, well, and that's like anything too. You do, you've got your pets, you've got your life, you've got a bunch of stuff going on. Am I going to brush my pet's teeth? That's a great idea, but mm, in reality, I'm probably not going to get it done because um, I'm going to stress that you do it more than once every two months. So we've got some cool products. We've got some um, some enzyme toothpaste that get in the mouth and they react with the saliva and they generate some enzymes. There's not fluoride in these things. And so the dogs can swallow the, the toothpaste and not, not have any problem with, um, with that. And, and so, so brushing is the number one thing. And to do it, you know, over the years, I've just decided, shoot, if I can get people to brush it once a day, and I don't care where, when, and so I, I recommend to people that put their dental kit their right by where the dog food is and right before you do your cat food. And before you do that, you know what, let's let's just remove the last 24 hours accumulation of tartar and things like, or not tartar, you're not going to brush off tartar, but the placky, filmy stuff that will come off with a brush. Let's, let's do that and then feed them. And then you're done with your little pet cycle there and you can go on with with your life um i think it's a rare individual but highly commendable if they if someone is is going to go okay well i'm fed my dog now i'm going to brush your teeth that would be huge so if you can do that go for it but so brushing is is important i i'm sorry i didn't i don't have a a, a live um assistant to, to, that I can show you how to brush their teeth. But I think a, a problem that a lot of people get is they want to they need to look. They want to look. And it's important to look, but you just need to know that yeah, those teeth are back there. This big duck, the big guy here lives under that salivary gland. And so you just I think it's important to keep the dog's mouth clean, get in, up underneath that that cheek and then just just some circular motions there. You don't even need to come out of the mouth, and you can do that. I just have the mouth gently, gently closed. Since dogs and cats' teeth are these conical shapes, um, we don't need to worry about the top of it like our tooth. And the tongue does a pretty good job of cleaning in, 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 on the inside. And so, so you're right there. That dog, dogs are gonna, and cats are going to keep some of their half of their tooth surface a little clean just with their tongue. But that can build up too. There's not so much salivary stuff going on inside um, of the, the jaws uh, than on the outside. I think another product that works real well is this stuff called Cleansident. And it, it's a little powder that you add to the food and it it's got iodine in it and it changes the that biofilm. And I know with um, a dog of mine, I started him on that. He had great teeth his whole life, and his breath improved a lot. But that's called Cleansadent. There's dental rinses, your um, the greenies, and some of those dental chews. Those things are also awesome. Um, and 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 then the rinses, and yeah, there's a whole variety of things like that. Um, so the the most important thing about prevention is do it. 
and do it regularly and um, and, and just know that, yeah, we're probably going to have to have a dental cleaning, just like you or I, um, every now and again, just to make sure that you know, we're getting everything, getting the stuff that we can't brush up. Okay, so that, <laughs> that's pretty much all I had. I wanted to, you know, we got, we got some time for some questions, and I certainly want to address, you know, what's, what's on you guys' mind. Um, so, Dr. Spees, you were saying that uh, the dental exam should be done every now and again. Is there a timeline on that and how often it should be done? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't. Well, you know, hopefully if you if your, your pet, a younger, younger animal, you know, say, you know, one to seven, we just, you're going to have an annual physical examination with your veterinarian. And that's certainly a time that a dental exam is going to be done. Now, once we get over seven years of age, and we kind of hit that point. Some of us have been, we're over the point there, but our body is it's not building and doing all this stuff. It's starting to like degenerate. And so those, those exams, we recommend, you know, twice a year. And so you, you, your pet's going to have a, a, a dental exam every six months if it's over seven years old. At least that's our recommendation. But I, I encourage everybody to look at their pet's mouth. And that's, that's that, that kind of gets back to puppyhood and kitten. You know, get, get, you, get these animals used to your fingers in there and, and, and doing things and looking. And not only just looking at that canine teeth, but pulling that Getting, getting back there and looking at these back molars and see, see what's happening there. Because you guys can do great dental exams and you should do it every day. Right. Um, with dental disease, can it lead to uh, further complications within an animal? Oh, certainly. Certainly. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was about a month after I discovered that, that rotten infected tooth in my in my dog that his kidneys went south and I, I, I you know hold myself responsible for letting that happen probably a little prematurely but yeah, yeah. the bacteria they go everywhere so and that was a direct response to poor dental health i think so it was certainly a contributor i mean he was an older dog too but um that it, it contributed and then the other thing about these these mouse is gosh, they gotta hurt. They they just they it can't you know how if you got something stuck in your gum and you didn't notice it, you're oh I'm not a little hold it on. And and so these guys are living with it 24-7. And do they show us not not so well? Right. Um and is that like with the teeth brushing, is that would that go the same with cats? as well uh-huh yeah these most brushes have a smaller thing like that one thing about the brush is is it you know you got to deep with it again i want people to, to work on these teeth daily and a fingerprint's got got pretty good abrasive stuff you get some toothpaste on your fingertip and uh, and, and pets are going to um accept a finger maybe a little more readily than a plastic plastic toothbrush that, that's getting jammed around in there. So it's important to kind of train your pet to, to, to let it have its teeth brush. And that starts early on with just getting your your um, your fingers in the mouth and then allowing you to look in there and do things. Um, but just a little bit on a gradient, you know, to, to where you can actually then get in there and, and do some do some good with the brushing. Yeah, now I know my cat, he's almost a year old, and he would much rather chew on something that's plastic than, you know, let it swish around in his mouth. But yeah, for, we've ha actually had him um, from day one. He was one of my foster kittens, and, you know, he just stayed with us forever. Um, but from the beginning, we've tried to get him comfortable with us sticking our fingers in his mouth and looking in his ears and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's it, it's something that some pets just just they don't like to, to mess with, and and so 
you know, but they're they're the minority. Um, one other preventative thing that I, I, I failed to mention is, <laughs> you know, I said we, we started screwing these dogs around by feeding them uh, when we domesticated them. Now we've come full circle and there's actually some dog food and cat food that, that actually help with keeping the teeth clean with just their formulations of either a big kibble that pills TV, they call it, and that's that's just a big kibble, and the tooth actually has to penetrate it before busting too. So that's kind of slick. And then Purina's products just kind of a different crunch to it. But most of your major dental or pet food manufacturers, they have a dental formulation that that, that helps. It's not going to be a cure-all, end-all for for everything, but it's just part of breastfeeding. You know, cleanse the dent, rinses, and 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 food. Right, so I guess there is um, a positive impact to feeding our animals kibble then. Um, well, it, it, it just yeah, conventional wisdom thinking that, yeah, you know, you got something crunchy that's going to help. Um, but you know what, it doesn't, the form of the food, I've seen, I've seen horrendous tartar on, on pets that are eating nothing but kibble and some beautiful teeth and oral health on nothing but canned food. Right. So, are, there, are there any breeds that uh, dental issues are more prone to? Um, certainly. Um, toy breeds seem to have more problems. Um, one thing I didn't mention that, that, that's on this model is, you know, young, young pets, they have baby teeth and, and they, um, they should get pushed out when the adult tooth comes in, but sometimes they don't. And Yorkshire Terriers, they're, they're I, some of them look like sharks. They come in, their adult teeth come in, and they still have all their baby teeth. And that causes a lot of crowding, and you get a lot of these teeth that stuck another food trap area. So those things need to be removed. You don't want two of the same tooth in the, in the head, as they say. Now, but, what, well, look, what happens when animals lose their teeth? Because, like, I mean, I have, like I said, we've had our cat since day one and his teeth have grown, you know, and you can tell that they're not baby teeth anymore, but it's not like when I had my, you know, when my kids were losing their teeth and you pulled it out and there it was in your hand where like with him, he's gotten, he's lost his baby teeth, but what happened to him? The ground like swallow. <laughs> Is that you'd, have to go, you'd have to go looking for those. Oh. Is it safe to swallow your teeth? Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's usually what happens. But when they don't, then then they um, then they need to be extracted. And for years, my my minimum age to spay and neuter pets is six months because mm -hmm. after by six months, all those teeth have have come out, and we're going to know if you've got a retained baby tooth or not at that age. Did a, I spayed a little dog this morning and he had, we had to extract a, a retained baby tooth. Oh, it's gone. I'm to <laughs> I don't have my phone on me, good lord. Okay, there we go. Um, so what is the average age of losing your baby teeth and getting your adult teeth in? Okay, for pets, it's six months. You're okay, gonna, and that's just all across the board? Well, you'll see the, the, the front incisors, the front incisors are the first, and they'll come in at about four months, and then, and then the, the molars and all those things, they're, they're coming in. Um, and then the canine teeth are the last, and they'll erupt and be coming in at six months. So okay. after six months, a dog or cat are going to have all their adult teeth. All right. Well, we don't have any more questions from our audience, and so um, we've got a few more minutes. I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to add. Well, I, I'm sorry, I did kind of just pinball around. That's, I, I, I had to sit through so many lectures that I always thought I'm never going to give a lecture. <laughs> <laughs> so, so unfortunately, I, I, um, 
and I kind of went all over the place. Um, the if if you if you've got a pet that has advanced dental problems like like some of those we saw, um, I strongly urge you to to um, you know, have them have them professionally done, and get you'll be amazed at, at how how much better your pet feels and acts, and how much you know you you can get up close and personal with them. I mean, that little dog with with the hair wrapped around his his teeth. Unfortunately, that's that's a common thing I see, but that 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 does that does smell. And it, it's, it's it's something that you don't have to subject yourself to, um, but then it's it, there, it's scary. It, 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 there is some some risk involved with anesthesia, but with all the pre-anesthetic workups that we do with the gas anesthesias now, the monitoring um, and and all that, it's become it's become something that that is always. Right, right on our minds, the technicians, the doctors, everybody's. But in reality, it's 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 not a risk at all. So the risks versus benefits, the benefits far outweigh outweigh the risks. Pet older pets, I mean, age is not a contraindication. You have your mouth healthier, um, and and the heart murmurs and all this other kind of stuff. Again, our anesthetics don't don't screw up a bunch of the major organs, um, and like they well, gas anesthesia is just you, as soon as we turn them off, they're they're starting to wake up. Um, the cost the cost factor is it can certainly be a deterrent. Um, I mean, we do our our basic fee for um, getting and doing a, a dental cleaning. Is is five hundred dollars? That includes all the pre-anesthetic stuff, the, the X-rays, and and all that, and, and and so that's that's where we where we start. But you um, you get in there, and you see X-rays, and and you see bad teeth, then that's usually a phone call to the pet owner and going, you know what, we got we got some extractions to do, and that's gonna that's time and energy and money. Um, but there's some some excellent financing out there with care credit and things like that, um, and and so I mean money is always something that everybody's you know it's, it's something we worry about and it's um, but when it's all said and done it, there's usually a way to to get the money or get everything get it all paid for and and so I I, I guess. Just think of the benefits of doing something like that over the risks, or 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 over just not doing anything about it. Like, no, 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 no. Um, you know, so you, you'll be amazed. All right, well, I know that I am inspired to start a new routine with my dog and my cat um, with brushing their teeth now. Um, you know, and I. I'll probably go out to uh, the toothpaste that you were showing us. Is that something that you can pick up at the pet store? Yeah, I think it's 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 everywhere. I mean, it's poultry okay. flavor. They make different flavors, but I think it's funny they make the poultry flavor. I guess if your toothpaste tastes like chicken, then you're really doing something. I wouldn't want my toothpaste to taste like chicken, but you know that's just me. My cat, on the other hand, loves it so. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think I'm a little bit more inspired to, you know, make sure that my cat and my dog have healthy mouths and, uh, you know, I don't want them to take after me by any means. Well, then I, I, I feel this is a success if I, I've turned one one person around on, on getting after looking in the end and doing something about their pet's oral health, then, then we've done something. Yeah, well, thank you, Dr. Spees, so much for taking your afternoon and sharing with us, uh, imparting your knowledge of dental health. And like I said, I know that I'm inspired. I hope that we go out and we've inspired others that have watched this webinar today. All right. Can I give you my email address? Uh, sure, go for it. So anybody's welcome to fire me a question. 
Um, and my email address is Dr. Spees, D R S P E A S, at ccpet.com. And I'll be happy to, happy to uh, re respond to any, any questions that have come up. Yeah, and I've, I've gone ahead and put your email in the chat box as well for uh, anybody who didn't get the chance to write it down real quick. Um, but this webinar is recorded, so you can always go back and listen to it. And um, as well, if you have any questions, you can email us at Pasadena Humane. Um, it's going to go to outreach at Pasadena Humane, and I will personally um, get your email, and I can forward it on to Dr. Spies for you. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and have a fabulous afternoon. Bye-bye. Right.